Okay, so now, now let's deal with a solution in which instead of just mixing things and seeing what happens in terms of what does the pH that we reach, let's think about, well, what if we actually go and we alter the pH, say, with a strong acid or a base? So maybe you make something in the lab or you take something in the lab and you drop in some acid or a base and now you want to see what happens. We're going to be seeing this all the time when we talk about buffers and we'll talk about in a minute how we can do a more complicated example using a sort of buffered solution. But for now, let's just deal with a simple, um, simpler situation. And but we're still going to be using this Henderson Hasselbach equation. So in this equation, now we're saying not only do we need to take into account that pKa, so basically if we were to just mix it in water and let it go, like, okay, what would the pH be? Or even if we were to mix it with another base, what would the pH be? Instead here, we're saying, okay, well, now there's an external source of our protons or of hydronium. And so this is going to alter the pH. So remember that the pH is going to be determined, uh, the pH is going to be the minus log of our of the proton concentration. And so we're gonna have protons that are take, given um, both from the initial acid we dissolved as well as from whatever acid we're adding. And so we're gonna to have to take into account the, both of those. And then that's going to basically affect the ratio of our acid and our base. But that ratio is still going to depend on the pKa. So we have this complicated relationship. Well, it's not that complicated thanks to Henderson Hassel and Hasselbach kind of simplifying things out to for us into this equation where we have the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the conjugate acid, um, the conjugate base over the conjugate acid. And we'll be, um, I encourage you to go and derive this and my students will, will be deriving this in class. So get ready for that. It'll help you see where things come from. But for now, we're just going to use this as given. So we're going to go ahead and we're actually just going to copy and paste so we don't so we have it right where we can look at it. Okay, so in this question, we're asked, okay, what is the concentration of 150 millimolar acetic acid acetate solution at a pH of five and how many moles of acetate are there in the 100 milliliters of this solution? So two parts, we'll take them one by one, um, but don't worry, if you know one, you can find the other pretty easily. Um, if you know the concentration and you know the volume, then you just have to divide by the volume and you can voila, get the number of moles. Okay, so this is going to be the equation that we're going to be working with. So we're still gonna have that situation where we have our acetic acid and it's going to be reaching an equilibrium of acetate plus H3O plus. But this is going to be from external sources too. And so when we, if we use Henderson Hasselbach, all we have to do is we have to say, okay, well, the pH is going to be five equals the pKa. Remember, this is gonna be our 4.8 plus the log of our conjugate acid, I mean, our conjugate base over our conjugate acid. And so now we need to think about, okay, well, how can we write the conjugate acid and the conjugate base concentration in terms of some factor? If we were to solve this and we can solve this as it is, it would give us, we can get the ratio of the conjugate base to the conjugate acid. So we can get, okay, 0 0.2 is equal to the log of A minus over HA. And if we were to solve this, we can get that um, we take the antilog. So if we do 10 to the point 2 is going to be equal to um, 1.58 is equal to our A minus over our HA. So we're going to be having about one and a half times more of it be deprotonated than protonated. Let's think for a second. Does this make sense? If we're at a pH of five, we have a pKa of 4.8. At a pKa of, at a pH of four, this means at a pH of 4.8, we would have equal amounts of the acid and the base. We're at a pH of five. This means that we're slightly above our pKa, but not that far. So we would expect them to have similar amounts. Would we expect to have more of the acid or more of the base? 
If we're at a higher pH, there's fewer protons around, so we would expect that we would have more of the base form. And so this makes sense that we're getting a value that is slightly higher than the amount, it's saying there's slightly more of the base than the acid, but not dramatically. So this seems like a reasonable thing. But now we want to figure out the actual amounts, not just the ratio. There are a couple of different ways we could go about solving things at this point. Um, so one way is to take this molar ratio and convert it to a fraction. So this is a ratio of parts of our conjugate base, so parts of our acetate per part of our conjugate acid, so acetic acid. So what this is saying is we have 1.58 parts of acetate per part of acetic acid. If we want the fraction, we need to know per parts total, not per part of acid. And so the parts total is going to be equal to one plus our 1.58 parts of our parts of our base. So what we could do is we could find out the fraction uh, that is a minus is going to equal 1.58 divided by one plus 1.58. So we're gonna get 1.58 divided by 2.58, and that'll give us a value of 0 0.61. So that is the fraction of it that is um, in the deprotonated state, but we want to know the concentration. Thankfully, we know the final concentration, so all we have to do is multiply this by that final concentration. So we just take our 0.61 fraction times 0 0.150 molar, and that's going to give us 0 0.092 molar, which is the same as saying 92 millimolar. If we want to know, OK, well, how many moles of acetate are there in this solution? Well, now, basically, we need to take into account the volume. So remember that molarity is equal to moles per liter. And so we can just multiply it by the number of liters. We take 0 0.092 moles per liter times 0 0.1 liters is going to give us a value of 0 0.0092 moles, which is the same as saying 9.2 millimoles. Now I'll show you an alternative way that we could have gotten this solution. Well, we know the concentration of acetic acid and acetate. So we have the concentration of the acetic acid and the acetate. We're given that. And so this is going to be combined. So we don't know how much of this is going to be the acid and how much of it's going to be the base. But well, now we do because we have this ratio right here that we just figured out. And so we know that the concentration, so we know that A minus plus HA has to equal 0 0.150. And so we can write it in terms of just the acetate. That's what we're trying to solve here, right? So we can think about, okay, so if we set our acetate equal to X, then our HA is going to be 0 0.150 minus X. Um, and because then together, it would equal 0 .10, 0 0.15. And so what we could do is we could say, okay, 1.58 equals X divided by 0 0.150 minus X. And now we just have to plug and chug. And that's going to give you a value where our X is going to be 0, .0 um, nine, two. And I'm not worrying about like my rounding and stuff here. Uh, but the answer here would be about 0 0.092 molar. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's think about if this makes sense. So every time you do an equation, every time you find an answer, I want you to stop. Think about does this make sense? Is this answer reasonable? It makes it easier to think about if things are reasonable by converting things into similar units. So we can either convert this to millimolar. So we could say that this is going to be equal to one, two, three, 92 millimolar, or we could think about, okay, well, we have our concentration here was 0.15 molar. And that, that's, that seems reasonable given that we're talking about having about one and a half fold. So all makes sense. 
this is a concentration that you could give it in either moles or um, millimolar. But now it's also asking us how many actual moles are there. And so in terms of able to get this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take into account the volume. So I'm just going to copy and paste this page again. OK, so we have 0.092 molar. And we know that we have 100 mils. So what we need to do is first we need to convert the milliliters into liters. So that's going to be equal to 0 0.1 liters. You're going to have to get really used to um, converting each simply between milliliters and liters and between milliliters and microliters. We're going to be using those all the time. Um, so kind of get comfortable in your head, just quickly moving those decimal points. So we have a volume of 0 0.100 liters and we have a concentration of 0 0.092 molar. Now what 0 0.092 molar means is that we have 0 0.092 moles per liter. And now we're saying, okay, well, we have um, 100 milliliters. So that's going to be times 0 0.1 liter is going to equal 0 0.0092 moles, which is the same as saying 9.2 millimoles if we wanted to go that way. But that would be how many moles of the acetate that we actually have in the solution, because we only have that um, 0.1 liters. If we had a liter, we would have 92 millimolar, 92 millimoles or um, 0.092 moles.